Hey guys, what's up? John here from fly8mikealpha.com and today we're going to cover in the shortest and simplest way possible what a constant speed propeller is, what it does, why we have them, and what you need to know for your commercial or CFI check ride. Let's go ahead and dive right in. First, what is a constant speed prop? Well, a constant speed prop is a propeller that has blades that twist rather than just stay fixed to the hub. So they actually change their angle of attack and change their pitch via a control in the cockpit. Now, what this looks like, we can easily tell walking up to any airplane by simply looking at the propeller hub. So when you look at something like an Arrow or a 172RG, it has a constant speed propeller. We can see these propeller blades that go into a hub and it's round at the base of the blade, it twists. And that twists via oil pressure. We'll talk about that more in a second here. Compared to these fixed pitch propellers we can see here, like you'd find on a 172 or a uh, regular 152, 172, where it's going to be a fixed pitch propeller, where it's all one solid piece of metal and the blades don't twist at all per the control in the cockpit. They have that natural twist built into them, but they're not twisting in the sense that we're talking about, where they're actually changing their angle of attack, changing their pitch relative to the hub. Other clues you have when you walk up to an airplane that you have a constant speed propeller is you have a blue lever or an additional lever on the flight control. So you have your throttle, your carb heat, your mixture, but there's an extra lever there. And it's much like a mixture control oftentimes where you can screw it in and out. You can make finite adjustments to it. That's often a prop lever or prop knob. Oftentimes it's blue on some of the older airplanes. It might be black or a different color. But any sort of blue knob is a very big hint that you have a constant speed propeller that you're going to control and set the RPM. It is possible, however, on very new airplanes like some of the Cirruses or some other airplanes that have FADEC like a DA-42 to have constant speed propellers that do change their pitch, do change their angle but it's all computer controlled. So you just are left with one single throttle lever rather than the throttle to control manifold pressure and your actual blue lever to control the propeller RPM. Now, what does a constant speed propeller do? Well, it changes its angle of attack. It changes the pitch of the blades to maintain a constant RPM, hence constant speed, speed being the RPM of the engine. So regardless of how much power the engine is putting out or airspeed increasing or decreasing, the propeller RPM will stay the same, where you know from flying your regular old Piper Arrow or Warrior or Cherokee or your Cessna 152 or 172, when you accelerate or decelerate in airspeed, you see changes in RPM because there's more or less drag on the propeller. In the case of a constant speed propeller airplane, that will not occur. So as you increase or decrease airspeed, the RPM stays the same. What will change is the twist of the blades on the propeller, the angle of attack as they twist to take a bigger bite of air as airspeed increases maintaining the same load on the engine, maintaining the same R engine RPM for that given amount of power that the engine is producing. Now, why do we have constant speed propellers on airplanes? Why not just have regular fixed pitch propellers like some of the basic trainers do? Well, think about being on a bicycle. Do you want to ride a single speed bicycle and have to go uphill and downhill? Or do you want to have a bicycle that's 28 speed or 24 speed where you can actually change the gears for when you're pedaling uphill, downhill, or on flat ground? Because guess what? Our airplanes climb going uphill, go straight, level ground, and they descend, they go downhill. So if you're trying to make the most efficient propeller for all those different speeds, well, it's really hard to do that. It's always a compromise on a fixed pitch propeller, whereas with a constant speed propeller, you can vary the gearing. It's like shifting gears in your car or shifting gears on a bicycle to match the load on the engine with the speed that the airplane's traveling at. So slower in climb speeds, faster in cruise speeds. It makes the engine more efficient. We can go a little faster, burn a little less fuel, climb a little better, all those sorts of things. That's why we have them. Now let's go ahead and dive into what you need to know for your commercial or CFI check ride. So let's first step into the cockpit here and take a look at our basic controls. You're used to seeing a tachometer, and we still have the tachometer, but we also have a manifold pressure gauge. Manifold pressure gauge is power. It's how much you shove that throttle forward. Tachometer is simply how fast the propeller's spinning. It could spin very fast and take a very small bite of air and give you really not a lot of thrust or a lot of power to pull the airplane forward through the air. Or it could turn at low RPM, take a big bite of air. Think about being on low speed on your bicycle. You turn your feet very slowly, but you spin the back wheel very quickly so you can go very fast. Same thing with the airplane. You could actually be at a low RPM setting, take a big bite of air, and develop more thrust. There's always going to be an optimum angle of attack on the propeller for a given airspeed. And when I say angle of attack on a propeller, it's exactly the same as on a wing. However, it's inverted 90 degrees. So instead of the air flowing sideways, as we're used to, straight from the nose to tail across the wing, that's angle of attack for our wing. Angle of attack for the propeller is in the vertical plane rather than the horizontal plane because those blades, think about them just slicing up and down. They're moving so quickly. It's not really moving forward at all. Just think about slicing up and down and moving forward very slightly. 
And we can look at this diagram here that shows us when the airplane's sitting there on the runway ready for takeoff and you hold the brakes and you apply full power and you have the blades pitched to say maybe an arbitrary number like eight degrees angle of attack. So the propeller is taking an eight degree angle of attack bite of air. It's taking that full bite, eight degrees. Now as the airplane accelerates, air begins to flow through the propeller in the horizontal plane and that causes a lower angle of attack. So all of a sudden now the propeller has a lower angle of attack, which has a little bit less drag then. So as you accelerate down the air runway in your 152 or in your Piper Cherokee, you see the RPM slightly increase. As airspeed increases, RPM increases. But with the constant speed propeller, it's constantly taking a bigger and bigger and bigger bite of air to maintain that set RPM and maintain that set angle of attack, the angle of attack that the manufacturer designed it to be most efficient for. Because with any wing or any propeller, and a propeller is just a wing spinning in the vertical plane, any wing or propeller has an optimum angle of attack it is designed for, and any more or any less is going to be more drag. Just like we know our maximum lift over drag speed on our airplane, our best glide speeds, those all come from a precise angle of attack that we want to fly on the wing, where the wing produces the most lift for the least amount of drag. Same thing with the propeller, there's going to be an RPM in a speed at which it produces the most lift or forward thrust, the thrust pulling the airplane forward or power, where it can produce its most thrust pulling you through the air for a given RPM and a given speed and ultimately a given angle of attack. Now to sum that up, this is the end of part one. So let me sum it up for you here. In the simplest terms, a constant speed propeller is simply a transmission or gear shifting on a bicycle or in your car. You can have high RPM or low RPM. You can have high power settings or low power settings, and you can vary the amount of power separately from the RPM. Why is that good? Well, we can go high RPM, high power for climb. We can go high power, low RPM for cruise flight as we accelerate. We have them for efficiency. They run off oil pressure from the engine. That's how they control their angle. And to control the amount of oil pressure being fed to them, we have a propeller governor. We're going to talk about that in part two. That prop governor is what's connected to your blue lever in the cockpit. So there's a cable that runs from that blue lever to the prop governor. It senses the RPM of the engine and then varies the amount of oil pressure going to the propeller to control the blade angle, which controls the RPM by controlling the load. So if the RPM gets too high, it increases the load, lowers the RPM back down, does a very good job of modulating that RPM. That's the basics. That's what I really want you to take away from this video. Part two has a lot more detail in it and a lot more examples of actually using one of these on the airplane to kind of correlate what's going to happen with manifold pressure and RPM. Go ahead and check that out. Part two is included in our commercial pilot ground school online at flyatmikealf.com. Go to our homepage click on the commercial pilot boot camp prep course that is guaranteed to help you pass your check ride along with all of our other awesome online courses private pilot instrument commercial and so on check out the entire website online flyatmikehealth.com you can sign up for free today to get started be sure to like this video subscribe be sure to like this video subscribe to the youtube channel keep up with all our other awesome flight training videos that come out every week your aviation definition of the day is parasitic drag parasitic drag is a pilot who bums a ride in your airplane and then complains about the service. Be sure to share us with your friends on Facebook and around the airport. And as always, guys, if you can't fly every day, then fly 8 We'll see y'all next time.